Hello, my name is Einar Jordan, and this video is to explain uh, some of the protocol that I'm using for fecal matter transplant, FMT. Uh, this is not a recommendation. I am not a doctor. I'm not a dietitian. Uh, I'm only a process and quality engineer in the biotech industry, and uh, I have been experimenting and researching for the past 15 years. I'm mostly on myself, I mean, mostly not entirely on, my, on myself. And these are the conclusions and update of my experimentation on fecal matter transplant. First, I'm going to give you my medical history. I was diagnosed with interstitial cystitis of the bladder long over 15 years ago, more than once. Um, I try using standard treatment and I have been unresponsive for the most part. Uh, I also eventually developed irritable bowel syndrome, fibromyalgia, chronic tendonitis, depression, terrible depression and anxiety, high cholesterol, it hit over four or five hundred, uh, high blood pressure, usually high cholesterol and high blood pressure associated with uh, prediabetes or already diabetes. Uh, I had heartburn pretty much most of my life and I was losing my hair and my vision uh, was uh, declining. I can now see you again without my glasses. Uh, why will anybody do FMT at home? Uh, it is a costly procedure only if you've been diagnosed with multiple uh, Clostridium difficile uh, infections. It's been approved by the Food and Drug Administration. I, I follow their guidelines for work all the time uh, and the CDC guidelines. Um, so, um, my specific condition is a, is a very, very tough condition to deal with. Uh, your bladder feels like it's full of, of blades and battery acid. Uh, it is permanent. It feels almost, it feels as worse or far worse than a really bad urinary tract infection uh, with all the same symptoms. Uh, you're unable to sleep. Uh, there is no medication that really works well enough uh, for most people, especially for me. Uh, you're in a, uh, you, you tend to go to the bathroom to try to empty your bladder every 15 minutes when, when you have a really bad flare. The flare can last weeks, months, sometimes years. Um, and it, it tends to get even worse at night. Um, every th if you're not in a really bad flare, you will have frequency of urination every 30 minutes or an hour in a good day. Um, and the flares appear to be food-based. So there is a, a dietary guideline that is very hard to follow because it doesn't really identify the root cause. It's basically self-experimentation. Uh, it doesn't work long-term. Whatever works today may not work tomorrow. Uh, the combination can also combination of two things that work may end up giving you a flare. Um, so I, I suffer from this for 15 years. Um, the current treatments are, some people go a, a, as radical as surgery, removing their bladder entirely and transplanting some another bladder made out of some other material. This still does not get rid of uh, the condition for most people. Uh, they have now, they're now implanting neuromodulators uh, which you got to charge a battery, it's expensive, um, and uh, you got to charge a battery constantly. Um, Freeze-dry aloe vera, freeze dried aloe vera is something that worked for me. You have to take, it's very expensive as well. You're running about $50 per bottle, which lasts about 15 days. You take about three capsules in the morning, three capsules in the afternoon. Antihistamines, uh, I didn't respond well to that. Antidepressants, I, I took clonazepam for five years. That seems to help a bit, especially at night, you're able to sleep two to four hours. Eventually, it stops working. Uh, your anxiety and depression just increases exponentially. So after five, to, five years, I had to discontinue it. So as I said, treatments are not very effective and they're not long lasting for the most part. Uh, often people, especially the male population, this is usually considered a female disease because most males 
uh, tend to commit suicide. We are far more effective at, at, uh, at committing suicide. Um, so what are the potential risks of a fetal matter transplant procedure? Um, uh, I guess introducing undesirable bacteria from a donor. Uh, there is people, uh, a small percentage of people, or at least one person I read that died. Um, there has been some anecdotal evidence of uh, people uh, behavior changing. And there is actually, there was a good research I read a while ago where they take two mice with different personalities. They switch their bacteria in their gut. Of course, they clean whatever they have. So whatever, uh, they, they were blank slate, but they switch their gut bacteria and the both the, the personality of both mice switched. Uh, so the lethargic, the lethargic mice, mouse, uh, started being more active and the active more lethargic. So the other risk I can I can think of at the top of my head is there are over 500 type of bacteria in a sample uh, and other organisms uh, that we know very little about. Um, so you're really, uh, it's, it's sort of a Russian roulette. Um, and there has been uh, the bacteria and toxins have been identified as a root cause of many illnesses and mental health problems, bipolar disorder, uh, schizophrenia. They, they found specific bacteria that seem to cause it. And this is probably why a lot of them respond very well to ketogenic diets. Because uh, ketogenic diets tend to suppress the outgrowth or certain undesirable bacteria. Bacteria love sugar and they will grow wildly with sugar. However, not all bacteria love sugar as much. Uh, the lack of bacteria is also associated with conditions. I see of the bladder specifically uh, that I know of uh, is, uh, is associated with either a very small amount to complete uh, uh, no existence of a number of bacteria, somewhere around five or 10. Um, hair loss is associated with lack of certain bacteria. So people with that done FMT have reported the 25 to 50% hair growth. Uh, and I, I noticed this with the uh, with, um, carnivore diet. Uh, my hair growth improved by 25 to 50%. Uh, muscle loss also, muscle building is being um, associated with certain bacteria in the gut. There are actually supplements that, that for this. Uh, they're probably not as effective because uh, they might not either make it all the way to the colon and or they're being killed again by an outgrowth of undesirable bacteria. Uh, fat gain also has been associated uh, and diabetes with uh, um, certain bacteria that's missing. So now that I bore you to death, let's go to the protocol. <laughs> the protocol I'm using, I actually sort of modified from a colonoscopy uh, protocol used by the Thai Mount Clinic in the United Kingdom. Say that three times fast. Uh, there seems to be a difference. Uh, there seems to be no difference or significant difference uh, uh, not even it's less than half a percent between the colonoscopy procedure and a gastric procedure. Um, the the protocol of Thai Mount Clinic uh, that they use, and you can actually go there to the United Kingdom. Uh, they they use is a ten day protocol. I think it's somewhere around four or 5,000 pounds that they're charging. There is a discount right now. If you can afford it, I, I will go. I, I just can't afford it right now. Uh, so this protocol is 10 days. There is a break between day five and six. They rinse the colon area as they implant on, on the first day to try to push out on the sorrel bacteria. The procedure lasts for, I think it's less than an hour. Uh, it's, it's very quick procedure. Um, and I think from what I understand, it's a colonoscopy procedure. Uh, on the, that's what I, what I, what I understood. Um, there is a break on day five and six, and then they continue for that 10 day period. There is a specific diet that they use. Um, 
that they are not explaining the diet. Uh, so after those 10 days, they end and there are follow-ups and so on. Now, I personally am going to do, I'm on day five as of yesterday. I'm going to take a break for today and tomorrow. I will try to do a separate video explaining um, the health improvements, or I think I already did one. Uh, my first video was that. Uh, I'm planning to take, to stop on day 10 and then do it every week. And again, I'm going to monitor myself and see how I am doing. Uh, I'm going to try to do it every week for four weeks, then monthly for four months, then quarterly, annually, and I will modify as I progress. Uh, there is, I've seen several videos of people explaining that they, they had their, they are not completely free. Uh, so they have to, but they, they continue to improve. So they are doing it weekly um, or every two weeks uh, after the first initial uh, procedure. And there, there could be some reasons to this that it doesn't take or, or, or work right away. It could be some undesirable bacteria that's just hard to remove. Um, sometimes they treat them with antibiotics, but it is hard to tell. I am not going to do antibiotics. I have no access to it either. Uh, in addition to my protocol, I am using my own diet. Uh, I have experienced that interstitial cystitis, fibromyalgia, uh, and I, well, fibromyalgia, especially in a dairy-free diet, improves a good 80% where I can actually do exercise. And occasionally I feel lethargic, but it's not as bad. It's not as, uh, as debilitating as it was in the past. So uh, I started first with a ketogenic diet and that helped me a lot to control uh, several of the conditions, especially fibromyalgia and my cholesterol, my low vitamin D, I forgot to list that, um, issues that all seem to have disappeared. Um, then I moved to a carnivore diet for a period of time and I worked very well. There's some issues with a carnivore diet that a lot of people fail uh, or have a hard time with uh, because it's not as simple as just eating meat. Uh, it is far more complicated. I Well, not far more complicated, a little more complicated uh, than a regular ketogenic diet, but it, it does help farther than a ketogenic diet. Uh, I will explain also in a separate video why it works, why I think it works. Uh, because, you know, some things are hypotheses that I'm creating based on my um, studies, experience, and my knowledge of science. Um, so, again, carnivore, keto, with no dairy. I will test from time to time, time certain uh, foods to make sure that I am not reacting to them. So, for example, I have tested wine. I started first with three ounces. I increased it to five ounces. Uh, I have no reaction to it. I have a small amount of cheese, a small amount of chocolate, and, and coffee. These are things that I, I react terribly to. These are my travel foods. Uh, let me see. Dairy, coffee, chocolate, fructose, <laughs> aged, and fermented foods. I can't touch any of that. I will flare horribly. Uh, and a flare is just you can sleep again, your bladder hurts and constantly. And, and every time I, I do a carnivore diet, and especially if I do an intermittent uh, fasting, so I do a 24 hour fast or a 48 hour fast, boom, everything disappears uh, by magic. And the, the reason is, uh, uh, as well, I will elaborate on that later on, is that it probably suppresses the bacteria because there is no sugar in, uh, and you're forcing the bacteria to not grow. So I have also introduced some paleo foods up to 100 grams of carbs and, and rice, about a spoon or two on occasion uh, on this diet and this part of this protocol. Um, I, I do notice that when I do drink alcohol, it's just like, like before, you, you don't sleep as well. So I go from, I only need about six hours of sleep, but if I drink alcohol, I tend to sleep all the way to eight hours again. I, I'm still rested. I'm much better than before. Um, and so the reasons for a low carb diet are that 
it does suppress uh, bacteria growth, on the, especially on the cyrobacteria, bacteria, which is the, the issue. It, we, we, we're eating a lot of sugar, an abnormal amount of sugar. Then we're taking an abnormal amount of antibiotics. I, 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 my childhood was just, I mean, I can swallow hundreds of pills at one time. I have no problem because since I was a kid, I was just giving so many antibiotics for any mild issue. Um, so, but low carb diets will not kill on the cerebral bacteria. They will just suppress their growth. Um, as long as you're on the diet, you're good. You get out of the diet, pow. So it is a, it is a very difficult thing, especially when everybody around you is eating sugar and drinking. So you, you become a little antisocial, which is it's tough. Uh, people make fun of you, the carnivores and so on. Um, so what the FMT procedure appears to do is that it suppresses other bacteria, it kills it with other bacteria, uh, it outcompetes these bacteria that's causing the issue. And as I, I mentioned before, Clostridium is, is one of the big ones that's been identified. Um, it hasn't been identified for other conditions, but you know we're highly suspecting, it is highly suspected that some bacteria out there or mold or, or, or yeast is actually creating something in there that's uh, just uh, causing all of these side effects. And the side effects are, are, are the, the illnesses that, that we are, or conditions that we are um, observing. I do, even after I complete the procedure, even if I'm in complete remission and I don't see anything, I do plan to stay in a low carb diet. Uh, I think intermittent fasting is great for your health. It is uh, it's not fun, but I think it is great. It uh, I, I see pains and issues go away as soon as I do a uh, complete. Uh, so thank you for, please subscribe to my channel and thank you for uh, watching this video. I hope it can help you understand um, and it addresses a lot of your questions. So have a great day.